Hi there and welcome to the 17th day of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts and as always it does not matter if you haven't done the first 16 you can just do this one you can do all the rest you can do all the ones before you can do no more it's entirely up to you now today's 30 minute workout I'm going to break into 15 minutes 10 minutes and 5 minutes with no rests okay that first 15 minutes you're going to do at a low intensity 20 strokes a minute then you're going to increase your speed and your stroke rate up to 24 strokes a minute for more of a mid intensity for 10 minutes and then that last five minute row you're going to do up at 28 strokes a minute and a good fair bit faster and that will take this workout up into a top intensity. I'll talk more about the actual paces when we get into the warm-up however so let's get straight into that and as always we have to set up our machine. Now in the concept two go to the front and set your drag factor to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor please just set it between like four and five because too low isn't the issue, too high is the issue. If you're on a non concept to just set your resistance so that it feels like a nice stroke but you don't have to heave against it to get it going. Next up if you can please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down both of which will ruin your posture and finally if you're able to please set your foot stretcher height so that you can come into the front of the stroke with your shins pointing vertically comfortably okay if you set too high it can be a bit tricky to get there set too low you can go scooting past and you could cause power leaks all right so this four minute war warm up we're going to start at 20 strokes a minute and I just want you to put enough of a push as though you are standing up from a squat and we're going to work on the timing between that push and your hands connecting the handle to your machine but let's get started and I will explain more about that okay here we go then in three two one let's go so it's a warm up, so you have to start off soft anyway. So while we're starting soft, we can work on the timing between pushing with our feet and hands connecting the handle to the machine. And what that means is the point when the handle kind of bites against whatever you're using, whether it's a flywheel on a Concept 2 or a water wheel on a water rower or, I don't know, a hamster wheel. It's up to you, a Ferris wheel, a wagon wheel, <laughs> whatever makes your rowing machine go so you want to push at the same time as you connect and then if you have a forwards tilt over your hips and straight arms and hold that position as you push your feet into the machine that power from your feet just floods into the machine and that's how you get the power in there okay it's not about pulling it's about pushing with the feet and now we're a minute in, you need to think to push a little bit harder and take the intensity up to like a 5 out of 10 region which is kind of how hard you'd be working if you were climbing up the stairs of the Empire State Building so you'll be out of breath, heart rate is up but you don't feel like you're working at an unsustainable effort if you have a 2k training pace, I want you at 2k plus 18 right now and that's your starting pace for today's workout and then I want you to go 6 seconds faster for the 24s and about another 5 or 6 seconds faster still for the 28s, okay? So this is your starting pace and then increase but I'll talk to you about that in the main row Okay Let's put one foot on the ground and continue rowing with one leg strapped in. So the important part pace-wise is just that you start at that low intensity walking up a flight of stairs pace, 2k plus 18 and then you increase it 5 or 6 seconds each time you increase the stroke rate. Okay, right change feet Ooh. and this single leg stuff is all about giving you a bit more of a stretch allowing your body to get into the right positions shin vertical as you come forwards is a lot easier when there's only one strapped in <laughs> right two more and then we'll put both feet back in okay so both feet in Tighten the straps, straighten your legs and roll with your back and arms. So swing over your back, pull in your arms, out with your arms, rock forwards with your back again. So back, 
is what picks up that initial tension, that initial pickup of the handle connecting to the machine is your back swing and then you pull in and then arms away back rocks forward again talking about forwards let's roll to the front of the machine arms straight forwards tilt and just press out from the front with your legs keep your arms straight keep that forwards tilt and press out from the front get that timing right between the foot press and the hands connecting this is a really important part of this warm-up is getting that timing right because you can lose so much power if you push too soon and your backside goes away from you I see that so often so often the same as pulling too soon right sorry <laughs> just suddenly got went off on one there so that is our warm-up done okay if you want to warm up anymore, please do. However, we do start off at low intensity, so that will build you into today's row. I'm gonna do what I've been doing so far in this series for 2022, which is to replay the actual row from 2021. And I will join you at the end for a cool down and some stretching. So I hope this goes well. Uh, make sure and hold your pace. That last five minutes will be tough, but you'll manage it, okay? I'll see you in half an hour. Let's get into this then. So, 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 for the first 15 minutes. In three, two, one, let's go. Ah, so, for stroke rate, either watch me on the video, or if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can listen to the whoosh of my flywheel. And you can match that at first if you struggle to hit rates. But hopefully, after a minute or so, you'll just fall into the rhythm of your stroke rate. And not really need that outside source anymore. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens on my road today as being yesterday evening I had the last of the races for the Zwift Racing League and it was 80 minutes worth of really <laughs> quite hard racing so although this first 15 minutes and hopefully the 10 minutes to follow shouldn't be too bad I'm a little bit worried about that last five minutes and this is why I'm so keen on trying to put across to you the importance of really keeping an eye on energy levels and making sure to kind of undulate between bottom tier and mid and then bottom and top so you don't end up ragged which I, which I do wonder whether I'll be today but as it is on run about a second off my average pace right now for the 20 so I better beef up my ideas oh forgot my watch again right so yesterday I went quite in depth across technique pretty much took the whole half hour session to go through from start to finish but today I want to see or I want to try and just give you the headlines and then 
we can focus on kind of making sure that we're keeping the intensity right and then think about technique as a way to keep the effort up rather than it being a training tool so if I can try and <laughs> speed up my description of the stroke that might happen so the most important thing to remember is that you generate power at the front of the stroke from your legs okay so you push your legs into the machine think about pushing it away from you ah. try not to think about the rowing stroke being a pulling motion okay yes you do at the back of the stroke but not at the front at the front you push your feet into the machine and then because you have a forward tilt over your hips and straight arms you hang off the handle much like if you were just hanging off a pull-up bar with your feet off the ground that idea of just hanging off it and that's how the power gets from your legs into the machine uninterrupted so you push with the feet and then you hold that forward lean and straight arms until your legs are about halfway through the leg drive and that's when you finally swing over your back from that forward lean into a backward lean and that swing adds power into the stroke which is why you don't want to do it too soon and certainly not before your legs connect and then once you have started that backswing that is when you finally engage the arms and pull them in to a finish so it's simple really forward lean with arms straight and then you just go legs, body, arms legs, body, arms but then you just reverse that stroke in order to return to the front of the machine again arms, body, legs arms, body, legs so you finish the stroke by pulling in your arms and then you instantly at the same pace you brought them in at send them straight back out at again, sorry so in, out in, out 
and you let your arms moving away be the momentum that triggers that forwards tilt back over your hips again so that by the time your hands are past your knees your arms are straight and you're in that forwards tilt ready to start or ready in the right position for the next stroke and because your momentum is moving you forwards all you have to do is bend your knees and you will effortlessly slide towards the front of the machine so it's about momentum the recovery and it starts with your arms away arms body knees arms body knees 10 minutes done five more minutes at this rate and pace and then we'll increase four strokes per minute but run about six seconds pace and really when it comes to increasing your pace and rate it's about the leg drive pushing harder with your legs to not only put in more power to the machine but also a faster drive speed and if you can think about rowing with a two to one ratio and that means that your drive speed is twice as fast as your recovery and what happens is that when your drive speed increases because you still want to row at a 2 to 1 ratio your recovery will increase too so driving out from the front increases your drive speed and then making sure you mirror your arms in and your arms away and get them past your knees body tilted forwards that should help you to have a faster recovery phase as well and if you do get unstuck with a higher stroke rate then often it's the recovery phase which is letting you down so do try to think about arms away and that rock over your hips but it could also be a mixture of posture and maybe you are tugging your feet on the foot straps to pull yourself forwards 
instead of using free flowing momentum to get you there if you tug on the foot straps everything collapses and you have to do this weird uh, thing to get you whew, I'm pooped after that to get you to the front of the machine again so not only are you in the wrong posture to start but that process of trying to get into the right forward lean at the front not only is quite tiring as I just found out but it costs you the rhythm and the time you need to get to the front of the machine quickly speaking of which three strokes to go one more and let's increase it to 24 so more of a push from your legs but you will likely feel that sudden step up in intensity as you whew, increase the power and your leg drive speed now for me 24 at 2k plus 12 feels really natural the handle feels as though it's just floating through the air as I start the stroke and the rhythm of drive and recover just feels so fluid not everyone feels the same way but I think most people do have a stroke that they feel most comfortable at oh <laughs> I can feel my quads starting to burn a little bit basically where the soreness from last night's cycle has been sitting in them all day and yesterday I was talking about the idea of mixing up training whether cycling will help your rowing or rowing would help your cycling and truth be told I hadn't been on the bike for two weeks before last night's race and I was a little bit worried that I would blow up really quickly but because of this 30 days of 30s rowing my fitness hadn't suffered at all my power output was maybe a little under par but 
all I had to do was go up a gear and increase my pedals, my RPM and use fitness instead of power so certainly the rowing helped the cycling and I think the embracing the hardship that I had to do especially over 80 minutes worth of a race will have helped my mental fortitude when it comes to rowing Whew. so make sure to carry on pushing with those legs I know it's easy when you start to chase the pace to fall into thinking that this is about pulling harder on the handle but it's not when you push harder with your legs if you have that forward lean and arms straight all that happens is your hang off the handle becomes more forceful kind of like if you were hanging from a pull-up bar be like doing that with extra weights added to you increasing the tension on the bar and that's what's happening here with that increased push and then because the tension has increased on the handle when you eventually do come in to pull compared to the 20 strokes a minute you are finishing stronger Alright, two and a half to go on these 24s. <clears throat> and do remember that when you pull the handle in, you want it to be powerful. Finish around sternum height keep your shoulders loose throughout the entire stroke so handle to sternum height elbows through your sides A little flare 
outwards is okay but unless you are an on the water rower who has been taught to finish with your elbows in line with your trunk like this when you come out if you've been taught to do that continue but if you are new or just all about the rowing machine then try to send your elbows through your sides wrists flat and that's where that slight elbow flare may come into play okay five strokes to go two one increase to 28 and around 2k plus five or faster oh. this will be very much a raised intensity finish so try to keep your stroke rate and technique nice and smooth <clears throat> so that you don't tire artificially oh. so I'm languishing <laughs> around about 2k plus 7 part of that is fatigue but once I get into these high rakes I'm sorry to say that talking to you starts to take its toll I'd rather carry on talking than worry about my own pace but that's not to say that you have carte blanche to slow down I want you to really try to hold your pace two and a half to go remember how quick the 24s went at two and a half well this one will go just as quick two minutes 56 strokes come on keep that rocking of your back over your hips nice powerful posture at both ends of the stroke a minute and a half come on
push with the legs finish with the arms a minute to go come on can you squeeze any more power from your legs I'm trying for my 2k plus 5 30 seconds keep that posture don't do not collapse in the search for more length trust your technique last five strokes come on two more one more oh. 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 let's take a moment Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's one of those rows where for the first 15 minutes you're like ah uh, what have I picked the wrong workout today and then you get about five minutes halfway through the 10 minute middle and you're like oh this is getting spicy and then by the time you hit that last five minutes um you're like oh I'm not too sure I can do this five minutes but then suddenly it's only five minutes and all you have to do is concentrate hold on and you get to the end and it's an incredible row and you're like oh I'm doing that again so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did is all I'm saying so right hopefully my little flannel there has given you enough time to compose yourself have a quick drink and get ready obviously because I filmed this cool down and whatever at the end I've taken all that time so I'm hoping you've had enough time so right we get into a two minute cool down do this around about the same pace you did the warm up at and just gradually ease off towards the end okay so here we go in three two one let's go I really just hope that if nothing else the whether you're doing all 30 of these 30 days of 30 minute rows whether you've only just done one or who knows whether you're doing a select few hopefully just the variety of the rows themselves but also how most of them anyway tend to mix up some form of a pace change or a rate change or something to split that 30 minutes into something a lot more manageable just a few times over like today's row 15 minutes low intensity is easy well it is for me let's not generalize and then 10 minutes mid intensity that's doable five minutes top yeah but then you string them all together and that's where you get a really good workout and so I just hope if nothing else that this series of rows and maybe even my channel as a whole who knows what it's showing you is that you don't have to just dial in 10 minutes onto the clock and just aimlessly row at some kind of an intensity you can pick your pace and your stroke rate you can mix it up you can change how long each interval lasts it's all up to you and it makes everything so much more enjoyable and time passes quicker talking of time passing we're at the end of the cool down you don't have to stop just because I have you can join me for a stretching session next or if you don't have time please at least what stretch your quads your hamstrings and possibly your glutes if you have time but don't do it in the shower because I don't want you to slip and fall over that'd be awful don't do that just find a moment and stretch them off you don't want them to seize 
Whew, maybe I hadn't cooled down or given myself enough of a rest between the two. Anyway, or you can join Stretchy John. He'll take you through some guided stretching if you have a stretching mat or space available. If you don't and you have to do it on the rowing machine, follow me. Okay, so put your feet back in the straps, but keep them loose. Legs straight, hands up in the air, and fold your upper body down. Okay, again, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. Fold, don't bend. Okay, that folding should get you right in there, right in the hamstrings, Arr, okay? Right in there. If you're not getting the stretch in here, right in your hamstrings, if it's under your knees, if it's in your calves, your shins, your toes, your nose, oh, who knows where else? You're not doing this the right way, so make sure and hinge, fold forwards, okay? So this is like, why not talk about tilting forwards towards the front of the machine? That's kind of that hinge that you want to do here, except you're going further. Okay, this should be to like a two o'clock lean or however much you can manage, of course. Let's not put on any kind of limit onto you, just whatever you can manage that gives you that stretch in the hamstrings. Right, let's do our glutes next. One leg up on the rail, up on the monorail. Other foot comes over so that the heel is in the crook of your knee. Bring that knee across your body so you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your, your foot. Hold it in place with that arm, with the other arm, sorry. Hold on to the back of the machine and twist your torso round, okay? Try and keep a good posture and just twist your shoulders to get that, or rotate your shoulders to get that kind of rotation twist down into that glute. It's a, I mean, once you get it, that the, the right amount of a turn with this, how much to pull this knee across your body, like you still want to just keep it in that straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. You're not bringing it all the way over so you're trying to wrench your hip out of its socket. You're just pulling it to get the, create that tension and then the rotation then helps really drive it into the glute. Try it on your other leg, same thing. Pull that knee across, hold it in place, and then rotate, r -r -r rotate round. And once you get it, you can just feel, it's like, I can just feel the entire glute just kind of open up as I stretch. It's almost like a, it's like a flower opening up. You get like one small point that you stretch first, then as you turn, it kind of, it blooms out into your entire, my entire glute, um, getting a nice, stretch through, which is so important for a lot of the exercises. I was doing step ups today, oh, uh, over lunch, 30 kilogram sandbag across my shoulders and stepping up onto a two foot, 24 inch, 60 centimeter, whatever you want to call it, box and then off the other side. Oh, crikey. If ever there's something designed to crack into your glutes, that's it. So, right, hams sorry, hamstrings, no quads next. You can lightly rest a finger on the monitor if you want stability. Flick one foot up behind you so that your heel touches your backside and then add some kind of a pull onto your upper foot, not your toes, please. And that should, excuse me, that should activate your, um, your quads. There you go. <laughs> totally forgot the name of them then. I only said them about 20 seconds ago and I'd forgotten what they were called just then as well. You wouldn't have thought, I mean, this is the 17th time just in this series that I've done exactly the same set of stretching. And you figure I've been doing this since spring, I think, doing the this series of stretches at the end of every single row. Yeah, I still managed to mess it up somehow. Forgetting words and things. Let's change legs. Forgetting words, forgetting stretches. Oop, my microphone cable's hanging down. I'm giving away the magic of television. Next, I'll suddenly do something to give away the fact this is all shot in green screen. In fact, look, look at this. Ooh, where's his hand gone? Oh no, I've lost my hand. Don't worry, I'm armless. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Hashtag dad jokes. That could be today's. Right, let's do our hip flexors today. So uh, <laughs> knee on the ground, toes up behind you, uh, front foot with your knee above it, and then with a good posture, push that hip forward. So there'll be a slight sinking down feeling as you um, open up that angle of the back leg. That's perfectly fine, as long as you get that stretch right up there into the hip flexors. So yeah, so if you want to use a hashtag to um, let me know you made it to the end of this video, uh, then today's is dad jokes because of my armless dad joke. I mean, it's like they give you a book when you have your first child and say, congratulations, you are now a father. Here is your book of dad jokes. Speaking of which, I've got a good joke for you. <laughs> I'll ch change legs. All right, so same, we're going to do the exact same thing on the other leg, and I'll tell you the joke while we st uh, stretch this hip flexor. So, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Darth Vader says to Luke Skywalker, I know what you are getting for Christmas. And Luke says, how? And Vader says, 
because I felt your presence. And Luke says, oh, that's such a dad joke. And Vader says, about that. Now, I think I've said that joke before. I think I've said that joke before on here. Because as I just did that punchline about that, I'm pretty sure I've done it before. So apologies. But the other part of dad jokes is that if they're worth saying once, they're worth repeating again and again and again. <laughs> So let's do our shoulders next, hands straight out in front of you, bring it across your body, hold it in place with your other arm with it kind of looped around it, and then just kind of rotate again enough that you feel that stretch into your shoulder. Um, yeah, and it should just open up, stretch off those tendons and ligaments up in your shoulders that uh, can take quite a, especially with today's row, because it was that mixture of three intensities. So you've got long and slow. And I mean, we do the low rate stuff on a um, concept two and on a water rower, it's a lot. I mean, a low rate row in a water rower is actually tougher than like the mid and high rate stuff just because of the mechanics of water. It's different than the flywheel on a concept two. So this is something I'd hardly ever talk about, to be honest. Let's swap the arms. Is that um, if you do these on a water rower, uh, and you find the low rate, the low intensity, low stroke rate stuff is actually really bombing you out, that it feels nowhere near a five out of 10 or whatever, then um, either, if you, can be, if you can face it, take some water out of your tank for those sessions, or just drop the intensity, okay? Just row at a, a, a pace or um, a stroke rate or whatever that keeps it down in that five, four, five, six out of 10, that kind of, your heart rate's up, your breathing rate's up, but it doesn't feel like, you, you can still have a conversation. It doesn't feel like you're working massively too hard, okay? Let's do our forearms, put them in front of your face, and then pushing your hands together, bring them down so that your thumbs are kind of touching where your heart rate monitor point might be but basically you've got straight your forearms are perpendicular to the floor and then your fingers are at right angles to that um, but yeah so different machines different uh different ways of kind of how how it feels and so that's my point is that on a concept two what, what i talk about pacing and effort wise makes sense because it's a concept two but if you don't use one you're gonna i'm afraid you're gonna have to work out what the kind of equivalent is so this is why i say the five out of ten is breathing rate up heart rate up but you can still hold a conversation it just feels the intensity of walking up the stairs of the empire state building by the time you get to the top of the empire state building you're going to be very 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 um <laughs> tired but the empire state building is really high so the same that if you were to row uh, at 20 strokes a minute at five out of 10 for an hour and a half, at the end of that hour and a half, you're gonna be really tired. It's the same thing, but for half an hour or so, you should be able to manage it and go, oh, that was a great workout, but I can carry on and do other stuff, all right? That's kind of, I've kind of opened out my stretching thing a bit too. He'll be done by now. <laughs> right, let's put uh, biceps. So hands behind your back as though, or as though you're a um, ski jumper. So they're like, your, their wings, your Red Bull wings. Whoosh, and then rotate your thumbs outwards, okay? And that will stretch the long head of your bicep. Oh, Red Bull. I don't think I've had a can of Red Bull for ages. And actually, they're one of the sponsors of High Rock. See, I can work out work in a High Rocks reference into everything I do, but they're one of the sponsors of High Rocks. So at the end of uh, one of the High Rocks races, there's like a table filled with Red Bull so you can um, get all, all that caffeine back down your and taurine, her. Um, yeah, but my memory of, of Red Bull, and many, other, many others out there might be exactly the same, uh, is vodka and Red Bull. Oh, right, uh, triceps, so put your hand up in the air, down your back so it touches the spine, and then help that tricep back and up so it's pointing directly up in the air. And you can put in a light, if you want to lean to one side to stretch your lats, then please do. Um, yeah, the, when I was, when I were a lad, <laughs> When I, they probably still do to be honest, I'm, it's not like, but when I was younger and going clubbing and things, going to nightclubs, the drink, the kind of cheap promo drink that you'd get, especially the tunnel nightclub that I used to go to, um, the great promo drink that they did was vodka and Red Bull. Oh man, I've got to think, for a start, I've got to think the amount of calories I would have taken in in a night, just for all that Red Bull. But again, it's like you get the kind of the dulling effects of alcohol, but then that real kind of jolt to the caffeine and taurine from Red Bull. It's such a bad mix in terms of what it's doing to your body. Your body would be suddenly going, I don't know what you want me to do. Ah, there's no wonder I could, I'd be like lying. You'd get home at like five o'clock in the morning and just lie there in bed going, can't sleep. Because <laughs> I've had like eight cans of Red Bull. Because it'd be like half a can of Red Bull until each glass. So, oh, I don't know. Not that I'd have 16 vodkas. Hang on, I can't do the maths. And four, four cans of Red Bull. I'd probably have about eight through, through the course of like 10. The club opening about 11, leaving about four in the morning. Yeah, maybe that much. Ah, oh, clubbing, eh? 
<laughs> but then I met Julie at that exact night nightclub. I met my wife, uh, where are we? So that's what, 26 years ago in that nightclub. So hey, it's got, it's, yeah, it's great. The tunnel, oh, I love the tunnel. You'd actually open these, they have these big massive kind of uh, brass doors, huge big brass doors with the tunnel logo on it. And you'd open them up and you'd just get hit in the face by not by just the sound of booms, 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 like the music, but by just the smell of Red Bull. Just boom. anyway, maybe that should be the hashtag. Hashtag Red Bull, and then they can sponsor me. Hey, hey, dad jokes, Red Bull. You pick your one. Um, yeah, sponsored by. You know, would I be sponsored by Red Bull? Yeah, why not? I'd let them sponsor me. <laughs> As if I'd be picky, crikey, I'd let. Jelly Baby sponsor me. Oh, I would let Jelly Baby sponsor me, to be honest. Right, okay. Listen, I, I'm obviously ranting on a little bit, and this one, this one, I've obviously had one of my little flights of fancy towards the end. I'm afraid, so I hope, I really hope you put up with me, um, and that you come back for more. If if not, I apologise, but this is kind of what it's like. I've got like what 400 workout videos or something up here, and they're pretty much all like this. There's not that many that are just straight me kind of going right. Let's roll. Right, we're done. Let's go home. They're always there's always a point where I can just do something like this. So. There we go. We're done. Uh, day 17. Um, obviously, day 18 of the 30 days of 30 minute rows um, naturally would follow, but you don't have to. You can do any day you wish. Um, you could do no more days for this if you wish, if you're like, oh, I'm not spending half an hour in. Um, you can go look at some of my other workout videos on this channel. You can look at my app reviews, my technique reviews, anything you want. And of course, you can get in touch, whether it's just like by leaving comments on this video or whether it's emailing me at info at rowalong.com, whether it's going to the Facebook page, whether it's doing the Twitter thing or whatever, whether it's just hitting subscribe and let me know that you are out there, then pff, do what you wish. Or you could do none of them. You could just go, well, that was a fun diversion. I'm going to go back to just using a cross trainer. <laughs> Please don't, they're awful machines. Um, yeah, so there we go. So just a reminder, if you want to use a hashtag to say you got this far through the video, then just dad jokes or dad joke or Red Bull or Red Bulls or Vodka Red Bull, it's your choice, or Tunnel Nightclub. You pick one of the myriad um, hashtags that I have laid out in front of you uh, to make up for the fact that I keep on forgetting, forgetting to give you something. Anyway, so thank you so much. I will see you in one of my other videos. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Be well. Bye-bye.